So in this video, I'm going to show how to create this floating bar which hides and shows when you scroll up and down. And if I keep scrolling, it will automatically go to that section. So as you can see, even though I've not clicked, it is automatically changing to that color. And obviously, if I click somewhere, it takes me to that location like this. This is actually a video that I actually forgot to make. It's it I it was it is like very old. So you could see this is the animated landing page. So anyone who have purchased this already has access to all of this stuff that I made in this video or in this sorry template. You could see all of this stuff is is available in that template, which is for five dollars. And each section has a tutorial which you could make from scratch if you don't want to buy the template. All of this you could make it from scratch. I totally forgot to make the floating bar which is at the bottom. So I'm going to do that. I received a comment. That's what's made me realize that I actually forgot to add the floating bar in here. But again, if you want to make anything from here from scratch, watch these videos or just buy the template and you get everything for $5. That's like, there are like so many effects that you could use and mix and match. So I've got a page in which I have five containers which are like 100% 100 VH and just section one, section two, section three and section four. So let's start first by making the bottom bar. So let's create a container. Let's make this full width and uh, you could do is you could use percentage if you want. Maybe like 55 percentage. Let me show what would happen though. If I make this to be black, if I be make it bigger, then it would be bigger because it's taking 55 percent and all. What you could do is you could go in here, go into pen and type. It should be minimum. Uh, 95 percent or uh, 600 pixels let's do like more like 700 pixels what this does is that it will take whatever the smallest uh, value is in here the thing is this is not responsive this is not actually available for mobile and tablet so this is only for desktop it's not available for mobile and tablet and again this is I don't see why you would do that in for mobile because it would take like too much space because there's already very less space in mobile and tablet but feel free to change the code so that it works for mobile and tablet if you want to really have it so now this basically means is that it would take whatever the smallest value is if it if 95 percent of the screen is smaller than 700 pixel then it would use this what this value but if 700 pixel is smaller than this value then it would use 700 pixels obviously 95 percent would be like this big so 700 pixels is what is getting used around here I don't know what value I used around here. Yeah, I used 700 pixels. To be honest, minimum doesn't really affect because we are not making it responsive for tablet, right? So probably just add 700 pixels or something. I will add some border. Make this black in color. Add another container, but let's call it, I guess, floating wrapper. Instead of this, I'll add another container. I'll call it as section one full width and add a text in here call it as home and I will not actually add any color in here so make sure to do this button so let's say if you do this and do clear it should turn into the slash icon if it does not turn into the slash icon you need to go to your dashboard you need to go into your elementor settings and make sure this two are tick mark because if you don't do that what happens is whenever you do let's say a uh, clear it automatically selects the primary color and the problem is when we use this color option we are not able to change it via code because you want it to be changed via code right else it would be same color when it is highlighted so make sure it is set to clear like this i'll also make this be in center so it is in center and then we can simply just duplicate this much let me just hide this let's just duplicate for the visual purposes, I'll just call it section 2 so that we know which one it is. Section 3 and then section 4. Okay. Then in the floating wrapper, we will make it go from left to right. Like this. And if you want, we can do space between so that it is nicely spaced. In our floating wrapper, let's just, I don't know, give it some padding. And maybe make this be higher. We can also make this be bigger if you want. It's your design choices. 
for this one i'll just keep it simple why not just it does not look good but it all comes down to how you style it later i will actually do one more thing i will give it a border of 1 pixels and then do white so that it is visible like this and give it a border radius of 10 let's just copy and paste style for every single one of them okay make sure to make it look prettier okay it is not looking pretty right now but again for now it's okay let's select this at the bottom of all of this we will add an html widget so this html widget would have the code but i'm seeing one issue that is if we go to floating wrapper we have a gap of 10 pixel between each element so there's 10 pixels 10 pixels and then 10 pixels so like 10 20 sorry 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 and then even in here like 10 10 so this html widget is actually taking some weird space so it would be nice not nicely aligned so what you could do is we can simply just create another container where we will store our html widget like this and make sure this container has zero height make sure full width let's do zero and let's do zero so this container actually exist it's just not visible you could even make it be responsive hidden like this so this container is there it's not visible and the code would still work we simply need to do is copy this code in here like this now once the code is added it would not actually work directly we need to do more stuff before we do anything i want to let you guys know that uh, all of this settings or styling i've done it via the code so that we can control it and i'll explain to you what you can change and what you could do so first of all let's get the dm nav menu css class everything would be in description so that you could get it or you could just buy the template directly so go to advanced and then add dm nav menu let's add dm nav menu let's add dm nav menu and let's add dm nav menu for all four of them again if you add 5 it would not work because this has been set to width 25 so if you add 5 it would be 20 if you add more then it would be different so this would be the width that is provided in here to be honest you could completely remove this and then manually do it for each one of them but the annoying part is if you change something then you need to do it for each one of them so i just like to do it in here or you could simply remove this it's i don't think it's even needed to add this stuff another thing is you would see that i have also set it to be color white it's not actually affecting this text because this needs to be p or span okay so h1 h2 it would not work make sure to do p and again it's uh, what you call a floating bar i don't understand why you would even use h1 h2 so let's do and do paste style paste style paste style okay paste style does not change the p <laughs> so let's just freaking do it one by one okay so we got this effect you could change any other color that you want the background is set to transparent and i've already added a border in this one so maybe we don't even need to add the border via this stuff so if i remove this you see there is a border added by default and it's a quicker way to do it so that each one of them just gets that effect and i know elementor is working in like a different uh method which is like sharing css which would basically make this job like very easier so that we don't really have to use the code which means that uh, you could simply change value in here and it would affect everything and i know we have a global settings but it's not good for like 10 20 different stuff because it gets annoying uh, but again the border is added in here if you want wide border you could add it like this or if you want to change the border radius you could change it like this around here so we have a color white in here i don't know why i haven't changed but let's see let's go to our code maybe change this to black and now when you hover the text would basically turn turn to black i'm going to keep it white uh for time being then we need to give another css class called tm floating nav men like this this is to be given to the wrapper which is like the full container and give it in here and you could see it is suddenly disappearing that is because we need to give some high z index but you could see if i scroll down it gets visible if i go up it gets uh what you call hidden if i scroll up it is going down if i scroll down it's showing up you could see it's starting to work directly 
you would see that I've given it position fixed that is same as going in here and giving position fixed and then I've set bottom to be 10 pixels so the gap is 10 pixels so if you increase more then it would be even higher I've also added a blur filter you could remove this blur filter because in the original one if you check it is actually has a blur filter you could see it is actually blurry behind this this is an effect that I have done you could remove this completely it's your choice how the design should look now the question comes how can we make this be showing highlighted one as the section is reached till top like this and it is very very simple to do what you need to do is you need to select the CSS class uh, DM nav container I, in the website it would be easy to select because I would have all of the CSS classes required in like one well, like one text or paragraph uh, this is what I'm using from the code because I didn't create the page yet and whichever the whichever it should affect right for example this one does not really affect every single one of them it only affects till which we reach till portfolio right which is this one it will only affect when it reaches till resources so you could see nothing's happening in here but when it reaches resources it changes so whichever section you want the changes to happen for me it is this one which is section one i just need to go in here and give it the css class dm nav container and if you know that if you have multiple CSS class, you could just do space and add more. But for this one, we will give DM nav container and let's give it to the third one. Okay. Let's not give it to every single one of them. Let's just give it to third one, first and third one. And I've added DM nav container to this one. Now, this is not all we need to do. We need to do more, few more steps. So before that, let's do one testing if it's working or not, which is adding active. So if we add an active to let's say this container, let's do space and add active. You would see it is turning to white and then changing the text to be black. That is because if you check this CSS class DM nav active, the color is changing to black and the background is changing to white and border is changing to white. So anything that you add in here would be applied to the active uh, applied applied to the active what do you call this like buttons or tabs and one more thing is if you go on top you could see this one is already active so if you have something that is like home then you need to make sure to add active like this so that by default it is active and it is showing the activated button design for the de testing purposes i will remove this now here's where the magic happens if i now select the home and then do css classes space home this is going to be the css class uh, this home CSS class, I need to go into the section one and give it the ID. Okay, not the CSS class, but ID. Okay, if I go to section two, or let's do section three. Okay, let's go in here and call it as section three CSS class for this tab. And if I go down, go into the section three and add the CSS ID section three. So this and this would be connected. So the CSS class or section three would be connected to CSS ID around here. Let me do preview. Uh, this is not active. Let's see if it goes and shows when I go up. So the reason why the code is not working, uh, I also tried to do for adding every single one of them. So you could see I added for section four, I added for section three and I added for section two just to test why it was not working. You could see I also add for section two, section three, like this. The reason for that is very simple, which uh, which is that this code actually needs to be below every single stuff because this code would not be able to control because this hasn't loaded. So everything loads from top to bottom, right? So if the code loads first, but this hasn't loaded, then it does not have a way to control that. So make sure the code is at the bottom of all your elements. Let's hope it works. So it is already showing section 2 it is showing section 3 section 2 section 3 you could see it is now changing nicely pretty cool right now if you click on it nothing's going to happen but that's very easy to do you just go into this home uh, if you type go into additional go into html tag a link you will get a warning basically this says that anything inside of this container should not have any link so you cannot go into this text and add a link it would basically break it so this one should only have the link and you could just type hashtag home basically you just type the id hashtag and then you type the id 
and for this one the id is css id this one so if i go down if i click on it it will it will take me to this section and again you could just go into this search and then go into responsive and hide for tablet and mobile and again if you don't want this to hide like this effect should not happen where you scroll it shows and scroll up it does not show simply just go into the code and make this to be zero and this would basically this code would still run but uh, it will basically do no effect which is why zero percent and also blur effect is around here for that for the bl blur effect to work nicely you need to go into this uh, container and instead of using black you need to use like very very transparent value something like this you could see that for the blur effect to work you need like very low transparent value and it will basically keep it uh, this transparent effect sorry blurry effect okay so yeah that's all for this video a quick overview would be uh, you know having a section which has the css class dm nav container and a css id in here we basically give this whole a uh, css class dm floating nav main because we need to make all of this move up and down then each section in this one has dm nav menu and then the css id that it needs to change to so this one is section 2 so it has section 2 so it will basically change the active state to section 2 around here section 3 around here section 4 around here and like i said all the settings you, it's like very basic and generic just play around with these values you will basically understand what this controls and this is all the active effect that is happening and then the blur effect so yeah that's all goodbye thanks for watching if you want to buy the template consider buying so that you don't have to make from scratch bye bye